Webb, manufacturing chemist to the medical profession since 1858, bring you Academy Award. The pictures, the players, the techniques and skills which have won or been nominated for. The coveted awards granted each year by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to each in his field for outstanding achievement. The House of Squibb, makers of the great family of Squibb medicinal products, today bring you two sing stars, Charles Lawton and Charlie Ruggles, playing the famous roles they created for the screen in that outstanding comedy drama, Ruggles' Red Gap. Mr. Lawton has twice been nominated as Best Actor of the Year and in 1932 won the Academy Award. Ruggles of Red Gap was nominated as Best Production of the Year for the 1935 Academy Award. <laughs> This is the story of a good American and how he grew. This is the story of Ruggles, a gentleman's gentleman, a man's man, an English valet whose master lost him in an unfortunate game of poker to a horny-handed American citizen of Red Gap, a friendly town of the far west. Uh, do I understand your lordship to say that I was at stake uh, in a game of poker? Um, that's right. Um, it seems I lost you, Ruggles, to a Mr. and Mrs. Egbert Floud. Um... Rather rustic chat, Egbert, uh, made a pile in mining ruggles. But uh, you don't have to go off if you don't want to. Uh, go off, sir. I've got an idea. Um, I rather think they want to take you back to Red Gap. Red Gap, sir? Uh, yes, ruggles. Some outpost in America, I believe. America? America, my lord? A country of slavery? Oh, oh I think that's all finished. I, 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 I believe some chap of the name of uh, Lincoln did something about it. I understand, my lord. There's the bell, Ruggles. I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't that chap Egbert. To collect you. To collect me, my lord? Uh, very well, my lord. By the way, my lord, uh, any parting remarks? I don't think so, Ruggles. Oh, yes, of course. Stiff up a plate, Ruggles. Uh, thank you, my lord. <laughs> Pretty far from London, eh? Uh, yes, sir. Are those uh, cowboys, Mr. Cloud? Yep, yep. Friends and neighbors. <coughs> well, come on, let's go. And remember now, none of that fancy butler stuff with me around here, Bill. As far as I'm concerned, you're Colonel Ruggles. You get that? Colonel Ruggles. Yes, sir, but I mean to say so. Right. Come I on, Effie, let's go. Sweet of you to come and meet us. Oh, how smart you look in your cutaway. I'd never have known it was you. Yeah, well, I ain't so sure myself, daughter. This is Ruggles, Egbert's man. We persuaded our friend Lord Brickstead to let him come to us. Ruggles, this is Mr. Belknap Jackson, our son-in-law. Sir, how do you do? You holy cow, there's your ma, Effie. Ma Pettengill, <laughs> you old maverick. Flowers, oh, you all horn tall. Well, ma, what kept you? I'll bet you were sitting in that old silver dollar saloon. Ah, taint so. Don't you know that this is the first train that's been on time since the railroad was built? Our own travel doesn't seem to have altered my dear father-in-law very much. I dare say you find him rather a trial after his lordship, eh, Ruggles? Not at all, Mr. Belknap Jackson. Quite the reverse. Hey, Sargo, where'd you get that classy suit? And that hat! Oh, baby! Excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, Ma, meet the colonel. Hi, colonel. How do you do? Where's your uniform? Mater. Do I hear the voice of that darn dude, Belknap Jackson? Mater, you can't shake hands with him. He's a man's man. You bet your boots he is. Hello, mother. Why? Effie. Well, darn me if you don't look like a real lady. Hey, boy. Mother, Ruggles is Egbert's servant. Well, too good for him if you ask me. Bring that luggage, Ruggles. Very good, son. You're going to like it here, Ruggles. If Egbert likes you, you're a regular guy. And if you're okay with Egbert, you're okay with Red Gap. Thank you, madam. And uh, don't be calling me madam, Colonel. My name's Ma. Ma Pittengill. Yes, Ma. <coughs> well, come on. There's the wagon. Let's get going. 
Come on, Bill. Uh, Bill, uh, uh, me, uh, oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, just sir. a minute, Egbert. I have written out this notice, which is to be printed in the society page of our newspaper. <clears throat> the clouds are accompanied by their English manservants, secured to the Earl of Brinstead. He will no doubt do much to impart an air of continental smartness to the proud reception today. Whoa, that's some mess of words, huh? Now, you give that to Jake Henshaw, the editor of the paper himself. All right, Effie. Come on, Bill. Let's go. Go, sir. Yes, sir. But is this the newspaper office, sir? Oh, no, no. This is Nell Kenner's place. The Bohemian crowd's having a barbecue. Hello, Sado. When did you come off the train? Well, I just got in, Jake. Uh, Jake, shake hands with my friend, Colonel Ruggles. How do you do? Uh, Colonel, shake hands with Jake Henshaw. Yes. Smartest newspaper man in the West. How do you do? Uh, Colonel? What army, sir? Well, the truth of the matter uh, is that uh, I, I... British army, retired. You don't say so. Well, say, that's a swell piece for the paper. All right, well, go ahead, Bill. Go on, now circulate. Make yourself to home. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, seems to be... A very tempting odor, sir. Could I inquire into its origin? Well, that's barbecue sauce, Bill. Go on over and chin with the gal who's cooking it. That's Mrs. Judson. Why, Egbert Cloud, you old son of a gun. Hello, Nell. I've been looking for you. Where are you been? <laughs> uh, this uh, meat sauce is really excellent, my good woman. If you're calling me good woman because you don't know my name... Name is Judson. I'm delighted to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. <laughs> so you like my meat sauce, do you? It's very good. It's very good indeed, in its own way. What do you mean, in its own way? Well, I was just thinking uh, that maybe a few drops of this and a little bit of that might transform it into a really superlative sauce. Oh, so that's what you're thinking. Well, let me tell you that I've been making meat sauce for longer than I can remember, and nobody's ever found fault. My it... dear Mrs. Judson, I was not finding fault. Well, then, what did you mean by a few drops of this and a little of that? Well, I, I only meant that maybe a little spice and perhaps some wine vinegar. Who ever heard of putting wine vinegar in a meat sauce? Oh! Why, <laughs> <laughs> I believe you're kidding. I, I shouldn't dream of uh, kidding, uh, uh, of doing such a thing, Mrs. Judson. I was only trying to put you right. Put me right. Now, listen, Colonel. You stick to the things you know, like leading a regiment. What? And I'll stick to what I know. Uh, my dear Mrs. Judson, let us not become embroiled in an international squabble. <laughs> Shall we dance? <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> Hey, cheat it, Bill. Here comes bad news himself. It's Bill Nap Jackson. Colonel, whatever is the matter? I must say you're the finest dancer I've ever had for a partner. Would you excuse me for just a moment, please? Mr. Well, Ruggles, what have you to say? Only that Mr. Egbert brought me here, sir, and told me to mix. I am endeavoring to obey his instructions. Don't be impertinent. I was driving past and I saw you dancing. Saw you with my very own eyes. Now, you'll leave this place immediately. Not without Mr. Egbert's order, sir. What? I am sorry, sir. <laughs> I say, was that you that ticked me, sir? Yes, it most certainly was. I hope that'll teach you a lesson. <clears throat> Why, he kicked me? <laughs> yes, sir. So I did, sir. <laughs> Why, I, I, I did, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I demand, I demand that that ruffian be, be discharged at once. Whatever possessed you to kick Mr. Belknap Jackson, I shall never understand. Nor I, madam. Ordinarily, I am a model of self-control. It must have been Mr. Belknap Jackson's unfortunate behavior. Oh, I'm afraid you'll have to go, Ruggles. Madam, do you mean that I am to be abandoned to my fate in this uncivilized outpost? Oh. <gasps> uncivilized outpost? You, you see, Effie, the man is utterly impossible. Go and pack your bags immediately. But, sir, how am I to return to England? You should have thought of that before, I'm afraid. Yes, sir. Now, just a minute, Bill. Just a minute. Look here, you two. Before you go throwing Bill out on his ear, you better get a load of today's paper. Colonel Marmaduke Ruggles, late of the British Army, bond by Vant and man of the world, is at present the honored guest of Mr. Edward Flowers. Wait! 
Uh, it's not the message I gave you to be printed. I know, Effie, but let me finish. An intimate friend of the Earl of Brinstead, Colonel Ruggles, will be a great acquisition to our social life. We understand that a series of entertainments are already being planned by socially prominent figures of Red Gap, such as Mrs. Judy Ballard and Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Wilson. Oh, this is, this is disaster. This is complete social disaster. Oh, how dare you pass yourself oh, off as a colonel? I made no such pretense, madam. You know Mr. Floud will call me that. Oh, Mrs. Judy Ballard. A party for Ruggles. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, how do you do? You must be Colonel Ruggles. This is Mrs. Baron Carey. How do you do? Miss Gary Grant. And I'm Judy Ballard. Mrs. Judy Ballard. We felt we simply had to make your acquaintance. <laughs> what are we going to do? We've got to go through with it. Effie, my dear, we've just called to welcome the Colonel to Red Gap. Oh, how sweet <laughs> of you. Uh, sure, you'll excuse the Colonel for a minute. <clears throat> he was just going to change out of those... those Black things into something cooler. Oh, well, well, we'll excuse him if he's not too long. Hey. But I thought... Never mind what you thought, Colonel. Charles, we'll tell you all about it. Come along. Colonel? Yes, sir. Yes, Charlie. Yes, Charlie. In just a moment, we bring you the second part of Academy Award. Until you've tried pure squib dental cream, you'll never know how much you may be missing in a dentifrice. For squib dental cream is three ways refreshing. First, it has a delightful flavor, cool and inviting as dewy, fresh mint. That's why you can taste the refreshing difference when you use squib dental cream. Second, its lively action brings to your whole mouth a sense of being gloriously clean and alive. That's why you can feel the refreshing difference when you use Squib Dental Cream. And third, when you look in the mirror, you can see the refreshing difference because the polishing agent in pure Squib Dental Cream is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective known to dental science. Ask for the dental cream that belongs in the great family of Squib quality products. Ask for Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Before continuing with the second part of Ruggles of Red Gap, we want to thank Paramount Pictures for making this story available. Paramount's current production is OSS, starring Alan Ladd and Geraldine Fitzgerald. And now the House of Squib presents part two of Academy Awards, starring Charles Lawton and Charlie Ruggles in Ruggles of Red Gap. the class is over. Just what are you doing in the library, Ruggles? I am discovering the most amazing things about your country, sir. A, a, a land of the freedom and equality. Do you know what Abraham Lincoln said? Where did you get that book? I found it on the shelf, sir. So I see. Well, if you were taking the trouble to look, you would have found my name on the flyleaf. And if you had inquired, you would have learned that I allow no one to use my book. I'm very sorry, sir. Yes, and, 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 and those house slippers. <laughs> you're, you're, they're particularly offensive to me. They belong only in the bedroom. His lordship frequently wore house slippers in the drawing room, sir. In fact, I recall one occasion when he went dancing in house slippers. Oh, no, no. No gentleman would go beyond the bathroom with those shoes. Do you mean to imply that his lordship would... Drop that weapon! Weapon, sir. I was only resting my hand on this bookend, sir. Just your imagination, sir. Oh, no, it isn't. I caught the same murderous look in your eyes the night you struck me. I, I hope that incident has been forgotten, sir. Well, it hasn't. And that's why I'm giving you notice. Notice, sir? Exactly. And, and keep your hand away from that bookend. I can't believe it, sir. I thought everything was going so well. Well, for you. But for the rest of us, the situation is impossible. Now, here, here, here's your ticket to San Francisco. I fancy you can manage to work your way to London from there. That's all, Ruggles. You'll just have time to pack and catch the number 36. South! <laughs> My train is a half hour late, and I thought I would drop in and have a bite to eat. Welcome to the Silver Dollar Saloon, Colonel. Eat hearty. Well, 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 well. What, what are you doing here, Bill? Oh, Mr. Cloud, sir. I, I, I hope you don't think that I followed you here, sir. 
I thought you were on your way to the ranch. We are. Only we thought it wouldn't hurt none if we split a bottle of liquor first. Well, what's eating you, Bill? Sit down. It's very nice of you to cover an awkward situation like this, sir. But I must ask to be excused. Yeah, what's he talking about? First time I ever seen Bill drunk. I am not drunk. I just want you to know, sir, that I have only the kindliest feelings towards you both. Tight as a tick. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must catch my train. Train? Well, sit down here, Bill, and sober up. Please, sir, I am not in the least intoxicated. I am simply trying to tell you that you are undoubtedly justified in discharging me. In the, uh, we better humor him, Ma. Yeah. yeah well, who fired you, Bill? Oh, Mr. Belknap Jackson, Be- sir. But naturally, he was speaking for the family. It's very kind of you to furnish transportation to San Francisco, sir. You, to what? Yeah, let me see that ticket. Ma, he means it. You mean that dude, Belknap Jackson, tried to fire you? Why, yes. Well, I'll skin him alive. Now, remember, Ma, don't do nothing rash. He's your son-in-law. Oh, quit throwing that up to me. Then I am not... Why, Bill, we wouldn't fire you. Not even if you look like Belknap Jackson. <laughs> I, I couldn't be happy, sir. Oh, yes, you could. Drink that. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I couldn't help overhearing. But will someone please tell me how Mr. Belknap Jackson could fire an important man like Colonel Drucker? Fire him for what? Ah, uh, ah, uh, we spilled the beans that time. You may as well know, Mrs. Judson, that my introduction to Red Gap as Colonel Marmaduke Ruggles was a horrible mistake. I am no one. Oh, you must be someone. No, I'm not. I am just a nobody. Yeah, but don't tell anybody, Mrs. Judson. You mean you're just a plain, ordinary human being, same as that? Oh, I couldn't be happy. Well, come on, drink up, Bill, and then we're going to up and move you back in the house. Ah, but I don't want to go back, sir. Yeah, what do you mean you don't want to go back? Well, well, I appreciate all you have done for me, sir, but Mr. Belknap Jackson will never consider me more than dirt under his feet, you see. And and this is, is, is America, sir, a land of freedom and equality, and I, I, I must take advantage of my opportunities sir, like Lincoln did. We already got a president, Bill. Oh, I am not ambitious for public office, madam, but I would like to become a part of this uh, great country. Uh, You see, I I want to be free and equal. Well, isn't that what America offers, I You bet your boots it is. Now, look what it says in the Constitution. What? Well, I guess Lincoln put it as good as anybody that day at Gettysburg. Remember what he said? What did he say? Why, he said... uh, uh, he, uh, he said, uh, uh, Sam, mm-hmm. Sam, what did Lincoln say that day at Gettysburg? Who? Oh, him. Yeah, why, uh, why he said, he, uh, hey, Curly. Yeah? Uh, what did Lincoln say at Gettysburg? Search me, ask Ike. He reads the papers. What did Lincoln say at Gettysburg? Hurry up before I come over and bust you on. Hey, Ed, uh, what did Lincoln say at Gettysburg? I don't know. I wasn't there. Well, what kind of a saloon is this where nobody knows the answer to a simple little question like that? Well, what are you mumbling about, Bill? Huh? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's it. Go ahead, Bill. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. We are now engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here. But it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be consecrated here to the unfinished work 
which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced, it is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people by the people and for the people shall not perish from the birth. <clears throat> well, turn my eyes, Bill. After that, I reckon you not ever go back to being a gent's gent. <laughs> Why, darn it, you're a better American than we are. Of course he is, you silly old coot. He's better because he's new. The newest American is the best American. Why, well, ask any Indian. <laughs> Dublin, you rebels, I'm fairy, and so are all the boys. <laughs> Snakes and Gila monsters. Look who's come to crab the party. Bill Nab Jackson, now look at here. What are you pushy-footing around here for? I thought I paid your fare to San Francisco, Ruggles. Yes, you did, but I, I, I decided not to go. You heard him. He's free, 21, and an American citizen. Right now. <laughs> well, then, I have a little surprise uh, for you, Please, uh, go away from me, will you? <laughs> I just heard that your master is coming here to fetch you. What? True. Lord Brinstead arrives this morning. He's making the trip all the way to Red Gap just to take you back into service, Ruggles. Now. Yes, that's so. Well, I reckon old Bill will have something to say about that. What's the matter, Colonel? You look like you'd seen a ghost. I haven't. Don't call me Colonel. Why? He's coming to get me. You see, I'm still his servant, and I should never have tried anything else. Naturally. Tell him you can't go. But you don't understand. The loyalty of my family to his lordship's family goes back many generations, Mr. Jefferson. And so you're going to drop all this. Your chance to be free. To be your own man among men. Just to keep some Englishman buttoned up. Now, Mrs. Judson, please. You see, just at this moment, I feel as if I should like to jump into the river. Well, all right. Go back to your old lordship and see if I can. And if you're thinking of jumping in the river, jumping it up for the bend. It's deeper there. You don't understand, Mrs. Judson. You don't. Get out of my way and stay out of it. I thought you were a man. But you're just a jellyfish. Colonel! Wow. Looks like that gal has her feelings hurt real bad. Slammed the door and almost shook her custard, putting right to water. Well, Ruggles, you'd better be getting your black suit on again. And while you're at it, put on your valet, man. Yeah, now look here. Wait say, a minute, say, you, what is all this talk about valet and everything? What's going on around here? Yeah, uh, see, Ruggles, retribution. I'll tell you. I'll tell you all the truth about this man. You have known him as Colonel Ruggles. Well, he's an imposter. Yes, until he began a life of fraud here in Red Gap. He was nothing but a valet. A man's servant to this Lord Brinstead. And thank you very much for announcing what I intended to disclose myself. It is quite true that I was in his lordship's service for many years. And I am proud of my humble beginning. And I am proud, too, to begin again here in America. And this time, I shall begin a free man. Yes. Uh, uh, now, uh, with your permission, Sam, I, I will ask this gentleman to leave your saloon. Permission granted. You! You ask no, me! No, 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 I, I order you in the name of Sam. You see, uh, this saloon caters only to the American spirit. Uh, and you do not represent the American spirit. You, 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 you are a snob, sir. And the cancer... And, 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 and the bounder, sir, words fail me. Then grab that pudding, Bill, and give it to him. Well, oh, pudding. Uh, yes, of course, madam. <laughs> the pudding. Mrs. Judson's tempting pudding. You dare to touch me, and I'll... I'll, I'll... <laughs> 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 you see, you see, you see I, 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 I did it, and, I, and I'm glad. <laughs> What on earth is happening? Madam, I, I, I very much regret that I had to use your magnificent pudding in a manner unbecoming a fine dessert. Bill, you did it. You came through. You finally bounced that stuck-up snob. Madam, 
I have the honor to ask you to share my new life, madam. After seeing this, I'm ready for anything. Even married marriage? Even that. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Colonel Ruggles of Red Deck. Meet Ruggles of Red Gap, everybody. <laughs> well, come on, Colonel, say something. Oh, well, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, oh, uh, you, you can fool uh, some of the people all of the time, <laughs> and all of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. <laughs> 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 If you were to visit the Squibb Laboratories, you could see vitamin D in the making. You'd have to put on dark glasses first, though, because you'd be shown a special lamp. A lamp so powerful that its ultraviolet light converts a substance with no vitamin D activity into a product with 18 million units of vitamin D per gram. That's more vitamin D effect than you can get from the direct rays of the sun on a hot summer day. The lamp that makes vitamins at the Squibb Laboratories helps to supply America's babies with the extra vitamin D they need. It is estimated that 80% of all American babies are now given extra vitamin D. That's why the incidence of rickets is steadily diminishing. And at the Squibb Institute for Medical Research, scientists are constantly seeking new ways in which vitamin D and the other essential vitamins may serve mankind. It's one more example of Squibb's endless quest for perfection. One more reason why... Squib is a name you can trust. Next week, another great picture. The House of Squib will present Academy Award starring John Garfield in Pride of the Marines. Struggles of Red Gap was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Charles Lawton can currently be seen in Universal's Because of Him. Charlie Ruggles will soon be seen in Columbia's new picture, Gallant Journey. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next week at the same time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Awards presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.